Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, here at the OU Innovation Hub Fab Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to safely operate our drill press. A drill press, of course, is used to make holes in things. We've got lots of different kinds of bits, and you can make lots of different kinds of holes. There's a few things you need to bear in mind, of course, when you're operating it safely. Always use safety glasses anytime you're in this room. Don't wear gloves with any kind of rotating equipment, because your glove could get caught in the tool and it could suck you in and things could go very, very bad. And since we're in a soundproof room, we couldn't hear you scream. So please, definitely use this thing safely. Don't wear gloves. Always wear safety glasses. The two kind of bits you're probably going to be uh, using most would be Forstner bits and twist bits. We've got a bunch of them over here. Twist bits are what you think of when you think of a standard drill bit. It makes a hole in something. Forstner bits are these really fun ones. These make flat bottom holes, which are very, very useful for many different things. We've got a couple sets of these, uh, but they operate basically the same. One thing to note is the chuck key. You need this to get the bits in and out. It is stored alongside the frame up here just above the quill handle. Always, always put this thing back the second you're done using it, because if we lose this, we can't get our bits changed anymore. So you put it in the chuck, counterclockwise to loosen, clockwise to tighten, just like so. You would hope it would be totally keyless with this knurled part here on the chuck, but it's really not. You still have to have the chuck key to really get it in there tight. So then, on off is here. This thing over here is your depth stop. It's set at zero right now. Let's say you only wanted to go one inch deep into your material. Well, you would bring this, you'd bring your spindle down and touch off to the top of your material. Then you would read whatever number this is and set your depth stop an inch above that. You run both of these down together and jam them together. Otherwise, it'll tend to wander on you and you could be off by as much as an eighth of an inch uh, by the time you actually get where you need to go. So with that depth stop set, you're stuck to right there. Please though, whenever you're done, set the depth stop all the way back to the top because most of the time you're probably going to drill all the way through your material. A lot of times what happens is just as the bit is about to uh, clear the material on the other side, it'll grab and it'll try to spin your part. So please, always try to clamp your workpiece down as best you can. That'll prevent anything flying around. Here inside this table, we've got some T-slots that you can put some clamps into and things like that. It's a very, very nice table. This is a 20-inch, 12-speed drill press. 20 inches is kind of meaningless. It refers to the overall swing. If, don't even worry about that. What is important though up here is 12-speed. Anytime you're drilling or machining, you have to go at a certain uh, surface feet per minute when you go to remove your material. This is so things don't get too hot uh, or so things just generally don't go bad and so that they work really well because we want you guys to be able to create really nice quality parts. So up here in the top, on the left side, just flip the top open. In the lid up here, there is a nice table that shows you what speed you should be going for whatever it is you're going through. So on the left hand side, the drilling speed chart, it shows you, you've got drill diameter in inches along the left hand column, across the top row are all the different materials you could possibly want to go through, and then you simply, at the intersection of those two, is the speed you should be running at. Now, all these tables are based on that surface feet per minute. If you've got a larger diameter bit spinning at a given RPM, the surface of that bit on the outside is going to be going much faster than a smaller diameter bit. So when you run smaller bits, you can run faster RPM. When you run bigger, you need to go slower. Or if you're going to go deeper, you should also go slower. So to change the speed of this, on each side there are two little yellow thumb screws. Loosen both of those a little bit. Then on this side over here, where the uh, spindle handle is, pull this little silver handle forward. You'll notice that when this lever gets pulled, the motor slides forward. This releases the tension on the two belts up here. Now, if you're unsure 
please always, always ask. You will not look stupid for asking. In fact, you'll look very intelligent for asking. You always have to go um, from large to small whenever you're trying to change it. You can't like take this belt and go to a larger pulley without going to a smaller one first. This table up here though is what I was talking about. On the left side here, you've got in the left hand column, it's got your drill diameter. Pick one that's close, um, but always err on the side of caution and go larger if you're unsure. Then on the top, we've got all the different materials we're going through. Typically in this shop, we're either going through wood or we're going through steel. In this case, I've got a quarter inch drill bit and I'm going through wood. It's soft wood. So I can go anywhere in here. I come quarter inch, come across to the soft wood column. You can see that anywhere in here, this silver is 4200. Well, in order to get 4200, I come across to this table over here. I see 4200 is all the way over here. It's the fastest speed there is. In order to get that, it shows you the belt combination that you need to get there. So I'm at D411. Well, over here, you can see I'm one too high, so I can start by taking this belt and I can move it down. Remember, I have to go to smaller pulleys first before I can go back to bigger ones. I've got small there. I can take this one here on the motor back to one. Okay, so I'm one one. Now I gotta go D4. Well, that's the top of both of these. I gotta go smaller first, so I have to do this one. Small, small, great. Now I gotta retension my belt. So I'll take this handle, slide it back as far as it'll go until I get good tension. In this case, it's all the way back. And then I'll tighten the thumb screw on both sides. To raise and lower the table, loosen the lock over here on the left hand side and then turn the handle on the right hand side to raise and lower it. But just be sure to lock it back on the left hand side once you're done moving it. Now one other thing you want to do almost always, anytime you're drilling anything, is put a sacrificial piece of wood underneath whatever it is you're going to drill. Because you want to eliminate tear out. Tear out is the nasty shards that come off the edge of your hole whenever the bit comes through the bottom surface. That's pretty much all there is to this. But like I said, if you're unsure about something, please ask us. I'm Mike Thompson, coming to you from the OU Innovation Hub Fab Lab. Please subscribe to our channel so that you can stay updated with all the cool stuff we've got going on here all the time. Come on down and see us. And what do you want to make?